analyst desk. Take it away. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Whew. Uh, CLG playing with fire there, scraping by with a victory in game three to push yeah. it to two and one and make it match point. But for a very long time during that game, it did not look good for them, Jack. I am convinced that CLG is fueled by doubt. <laughs> that is the only thing that makes them succeed because they win the first game, right. singing their praises, they yep. get absolutely massacred, and then their early game here was atrocious. And I was pretty much given up. Spawn and I, who predicted CLG to win the series, we're sweating bullets over here, yeah. but they pull together, they get some big mid-game team fights, then the Sona sustain can kick in, it right. nullifies the poke from NL, and they take a strong victory. Okay, let's talk about that. You mentioned the Sona list. We had two new picks here. We had the Sona for CLG and the Varus come through for Flash Wolves. What are our thoughts on these picks? Well, Varus is obviously an old-time champion from NL. When he wants to win the lane, he goes with that pick. And that Flash Wolves strategy, going back to playoffs, is we win two lanes, and then we win the game. But this time, I really have to credit Afromu a lot. I think a lot of his engages caught NL off off guard like at the mid turret right there getting caught and shaving that 6k gold lead down to three down to two uh. and we talk how the teams need engage out of the supports i mean soon is an unorthodox <laughs> way to provide that to a team i guess i kind of didn't do well in the landing phase got actually bullied a fair amount at level one as well but when yeah. it came out in the end it was good yeah well sticks they actually burned flash at level one right like i think it's so easy to punish a sona lane if you can burn summoners early and also give jungle support. And because Karsa had such successful ganks early, it was it looked like a game Flash was going to be able to try lane and just snowball out because that 5,000 gold lead looked like too much. Yeah, Spawn, talk to me about Karsa on this Kindred. I mean, we have uh, we had an early first blood gank to the top lane. We had two kills on the bottom lane. So he's just so smart. He starts top side of the jungle, and he knows that the one lane that will push up is the Echo because that's how you actually beat the poppy lane. And he just understands the limits of this champion. I mean, going through, he'd already marked him up. He visits bottom after that because he understands that's the next pushing lane. And once again, Ezreal this lane Still down. bullied because of the Ezreal flash. So I just think that this is really greedy from Stixay to step forward. But once again, Casa is just a master when he has that early lead. Yeah, and I also have to note that who he tried to teleport in to, to stop that Karsa gank, but then he canceled it when he realized Karsa had gone through the turret. And very rarely does one gank win two lanes. But right. that happened there. And then in his second gank, he won all three lanes. Like that level of early game dominance almost never happens that quickly. And the fact that they didn't win the game after that is a little scary. Yeah, but it does make you start to wonder if CLG is going to think about that Kindred moving in to the ban, pick and ban phase, rather, for game four. And we'll get to that. We'll talk about that a little bit. But, of course, as you mentioned, Jet, they did manage to lose this game somehow. So I want to get into what CLG did in order to kind of extend this game. We talked about the Sona being big about it. Kobe already hit it a little bit. Vision to set up the plays first so that they could have some of those engages and make sure that Kindred ults weren't coming out when they needed to. Well, the first thing they did is they actually established a dominant lane through Huhi in the mid game where he, the Rise actually was able to go with a Poppy and MMD was incredibly fed. I think he was 4-0 and 2-0 mm -hmm. at, at that point in time. But they were just able to establish that and then they were just so worried about taking out this rise that they overreach in team fights. And this was a bad ult from Casa, but great capitalization from CLG. Yeah, and I do think once they're in the midst of a team fight, CLG had the upper hand. Like, even when they were 5,000 gold down, all the little chips they got coming up to this were because they were getting pretty clean initiations. Then they were able to sustain through and continue the fight with Sona and kept building on their advantages that way. And in Flash Wolves, I think when they last picked the Varus, they were thinking, initiation, initiation. But it kind of is also a poke champion, and at the end of the day, their composition wasn't able to make sense at even gold. Right, so eventually we saw Ezreal outscaling the Varus a little bit, and on the back end of that replay, the Dragon and the Baron picked up for CLG. From there, much smoother sailing for this team. It seemed like they were operating more in their comfort zone once they had eventually reestablished at least an even gold situation. Yeah, I think Flash Wolves just need to learn how to think about the 5v5 team fight. This is not something they do a lot, and it's come back to bite them in games against AHQ, against uh, CLG here as well. What they should have done was they should have established more like vision control in the enemy jungle and start sieging turrets. If they started sieging, I, I think CLG had to go for Hail Mary, Flash Sona, or something like that. They didn't have a lot of tools to actually like pull off a siege, but they didn't elect to do that. They kept on baiting Baron, baiting dragons, just waiting the timers out, and I don't think they were too smart with their map play. 
play this And time. I'm going to go back to one thing that we hit on a lot in the group stage. Uh, double teleport and the ability to just turn on a dime with something like Arise actually means that that game plan that you're talking about, it can be, it can be workable. But we've proven time and time again that it is much harder in these high pressure, pressure situations. So that's why right now Rise is picking up the wins, I think, because you do need setup time with the Azir to be able to get into those situations that we're talking about. And CLG, Afromu, Huhi, they're just willing to throw themselves at the enemy with almost reckless abandon to not give you that time to set up. Well, my favorite play in that game was uh, Xmithy baiting in towards the uh, top side brush in mid lane where Afromu was waiting in the wings with a flash in on Karsa. No Kindred ult comes out. That was a huge play. Irregardless, North America's Counter Logic Gaming are one win away from locking in their place in the finals. Meet us back here in just a few minutes to see if they can get it done or if Flash Wolves will take us to game five. We're going to be getting right into game here for game three, day two of the semifinals here at the Midseason Invitational. Focusing on the heels, focusing on keeping Afro alive. Wolf bites down. Karsha gets another kill for the Flash Wolves. That's going to be another one. Darshan's in with a parallel convergence on the Karsha. Oh, so Lamb's close. Rose pick goes down. Who's the first kill and who gets out alive? Goes here, goes here, goes here. Yeah, can I hit it all day? I flash all day. I might flash all day. Right, okay. I'm ready. I got it. I got bears. I got bears. I'm a kid. Can I get it? Get it. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Can we go? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, where's the respite? It's not happening this time. That's the nail in the coffin for Counter Logic Gaming. MMD right through the upright. Poise for CLG when facing the deficit and calmly executing the team fights over and over again.